The biggest tragedy with vintage horror shoujo is that there's plenty that's simply not accessible, assuming it hasn't been lost to time. So whenever I come across something I can actually piece together, I hold onto that like there's no tomorrow. In this case, that something is Umino Yami Tsuki no Kahe by Chie Shinohara, which has a three-part OVA adaptation. But first, let's talk about her for a bit. As a creator, I will say Shinohara has a clear interest in power, both in the supernatural and paranormal sense, and in the I will kill everyone and their mom to rule the world sort of way. It's not unusual for her stories to get absolutely f***ed. For better or worse, they are also quite sexual. We have main characters that go all the way on panel, assault used as a threat to the protagonist, assault that is not framed as assault, and love interests that are questionably forceful. There's also a lot of either casual or dramatic murder. Or murder that seems dramatic, but everyone just forgets about it. A lot of people just die in her stuff. She's best known for her 90s period drama hit, Red River, which had an official English release. But in the 1980s, she was clearly into horror. <laughs> she did Yami no Purple Eye or Purple Eyes in the Dark, about a girl with a strange birthmark, who after being assaulted by the rivals of her love interest, suddenly turns into a panther and kills them. Good for her! The discovery of her shape-shifting abilities leads to plenty of drama and death, obviously. And yes, her eyes do turn purple in the dark. It's actually a thing with anyone who can turn into a panther. She's not the only one. This got a music video adaptation that was likely made to promote the manga. As someone who's into 80s pop and this sort of experimental stuff, this is really my sh**. I don't think I would have preferred a normal adaptation over this, because honestly, this thing is a mess I don't want to deal with. I'm good with watching a mysterious girl turning into a panther and just vibing. <laughs> In 1988, she did one about a girl's beloved cat dying under mysterious circumstances and then coming back as some sort of spirit or whatever. I don't know, I'm not touching this one. Why would you murder a girl's beloved cat? This is a hell no for me. But if we go back to 1987, we have Umi no Yami Tsuki no Kahe or Dark Sea Moon Shadow. It got an OVA adaptation in 1989, directed by Satoshi Dezaki, who was part of the stuff in plenty of other classic shoujo. <laughs> including rare adaptations like They Were 11, which is the only work of the legendary Moto Hayo to get an anime. Don't get me wrong, Dark Sea, Moon Shadow, it's also absolutely f it, but we are talking about this one. The plot is basically about twin sisters, Dumi and Duka, who are both in love with the same senpai. But senpai's heart belongs only to sweet Duka, and his confession will faithfully kickstart the twins' separation and Dumi's descent into madness. Things really get going when a bacteria that kills all the twins' friends gives them psychic powers instead. From that point, Rumi goes insane and becomes evil, deciding that senpai must be hers, whatever it takes. The twins have three powers that get stronger with the full moon. They can float, they can face through things, and Rumi's kiss can turn people into zombies that obey her every command. Which seems like an awfully convenient power for a villain. Duka can control people because she's a good twin. Instead, her kiss works as an antidote to Rumi's kiss. She never tries to see if it also works to cure people after they have been infected, because that will be too easy and we need the drama to be complicated. To be clear, what actually has this effect on people is the twins' blood and saliva. And just to make sure some I get immunity, this happens. Even without the kisses, those first two powers are enough to raise hell. Especially when Rumi decides that she likes facing through the human body only to start when her hand can pierce a vital organ. If it's still not clear, Ruka is the good twin, Rumi is the evil twin. Ruka protects, Rumi murders. While Rumi leaves for the simple goal of making Senpai notice her, she realizes that with her mind-controlling power, she could rule the world if she wanted to. And she's already evil, so what's stopping her? However, Ruka kissing Senpai first makes him immune to Rumi's power, meaning she can control everyone except the one she actually wants to control. And because Senpai chose Ruka and not Rumi, Rumi decides her twin must die. It's all very dramatic and traumatizing. 
I wish this were the only type of mess in her hand. But there's also Dumi attempting to have one of her zombies assault her sister instead of just trying to kill her for no fuck of reason before senpai saves her. But Mr. I'll take your silence as consent was also unable to behave before this, and he's supposed to be the only bitch we can trust. But anyway, visually, the OVA has some interesting choices. It really leans on the right shades of greens, blues, and yellow to create an atmosphere that conveys coldness and death fear and anxiety. When Rumi appears looking entirely green and blue, you know lives are in danger. Even her brown eyes look bloody red because, and I can't stress this enough, her defining trait is enjoying murder. Rumi only fails to kill Ruka because she's her equal. Whatever Rumi can do, Ruka can do it too, or counter it. And the adaptation really falls short when it fails to convey this. If you're gonna do good versus evil superpowered during drama, I expect to see them clash in dramatic battle more than once. But Ruka spends most of the time just screaming and running. It's honestly weird to watch this girl being constantly terrorized and it never occurs to her that hey, she could use the power she knows she has when she's in danger. But here's the thing, what's the final confrontation in the OVA is rarely their first in the manga. In my experience with Shinohara's stories, her main characters might cry and faint and then cry again, but they are not so goddamn passive. This scene is fine as Ruka having enough and making it clear that she will fight her sister if she has to. But as a climax, it's too little too late. Now I'm about to spoil the shit out of this ending. The OVA only adapts the first couple of volumes of the manga, so it suddenly ends with Ruka thinking she will watch over her sister as she faces her crimes, which is bullshit. Rumi shows no signs of regretting shit, and no jail can contain her, come on. It's interesting that in the manga, Ruka also kills and is not free of murderous rage, but she's still considered the good twin. The difference is that killing leaves her shaken. She doesn't want to kill, and when she does, she only ever kills the villains, like creepy British Bishonen with ambitions of world domination. Meanwhile, Rumi kills everyone who breathes in her direction, and she enjoys it. While the sisters' relationship turns a bit more complicated, they even join forces a couple of times. By the time we reach the final line, Rumi's crimes include assaulting Zenpai, leaving him traumatized, and killing even little children without any remorse. She's just truly unable to stop her bullshit. So it all comes down to one final confrontation, where it's up to Duka to stop her sister for good. They even wear the school uniforms, probably to make us feel that after everything they have gone through, we are back to the beginning, when the conflict was just between twin sisters, and there can only be one. There are many ways Rumi could have been taken out, but she dies by Ruka's hand, and only after reminding us they once loved each other and were happy together. Well, I do come to Shinohara expecting fuck drama. In fact, Red River is a bit disappointing on that front. Not enough bitches die there, or at least not the right ones. But bitches certainly die in this story, and the visual execution of both the climax and the aftermath of that final fight is really remarkable. I have never once felt sorry for Rumi, but I may have shed a tear regardless, because these are some strong visuals. What can I say? Shinohara knows how to deliver dramatic murder.